All right, quick, grab one, Dennis. You haven't had one yet, jump in. Uh, Nothing like a hush puppy at Shane's. Michael Sibley had a hush puppy. We had uh, Troy Flippin, Michael Sibley, Dryas Drayton. The Dryas said it is Dryas, so we got that cleared up. We also had uh, Braxton Boykin. We had Spencer Turkin for over at uh, the Tri Sports Network. A lot of good people, but the main man is here. Dennis White's in the house. Dennis, I've got a few questions for you lined up here. I always want to get your own personal sheet. You know you're making the, making the shift when you get your own personal set of questions here. Get ready tonight here. Paige and Grimsley on Friday night. What do you expect to see in that big uh, stadium, Mary Kirby State tomorrow night? What do you expect to see over there? I expect to see a large crowd, the pageantry of this rivalry. And when you look at the game itself, with the, with the level of play for both teams, Paige is playing exceptional well. Page is one of the top teams in Gifford County. You and I had to witness it first time. We've heard about it all year long. Page had one of the four best receivers yeah. in the state of North Carolina. I was Carolina. thinking this, and Will Jones, that quarterback, I was really impressed. I saw those guys. Yeah, absolutely. So tomorrow night, knowing Page and knowing Coach Gillespie and the relationship that they have, Page will blow Grimsley out because Grimsley just don't have enough defense. Grimsley don't have the offense to contend with that tough defense. And certainly, Grimsley does not have a cannon kicker by the name of Kaiser. Mm -hmm. Probably six or seven touchbacks kicked in the end zone every time. Kaiser is one of the most phenomenal kickers I've seen in a long time. Speaking, speaking from a kicker yeah. in high school, he know how to place the ball in the end zone. And any college team, Andy, looking for a guy like that. Your advice for Grimsley? <laughs> Go trick or treat. No. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> I'm not going to give you suggestions on that. I'm going to get myself in a bind here. No, I would not get in trouble. You know, we, But my suggestion would be if you could find some way, and it's easier, always easier to said to done because we're just talking. Right, we're not right. on there doing. I'm yeah. just saying if you could find some way to limit the reps. The more reps Paige has on offense, you know, obviously yeah. the more trouble you're going to get into. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, in light of joking, uh, another thing Grimsley can do, the try to help. You and I talked about it against the Ragsdale and Dudley game. Try to put pressure on the quarterback. If you can just dis distract him or disturb him, disrupt what he's trying to do, you will have a better chance because Will Jones is dangerous. He's good. He's not a pocket quarterback. And when they run, Andy, you never know what set Paige is running because they, they can go to empty backfield and then they'll do a shift and then they'll do a quick counter draw. Page have a lot of weapons on offense, a lot of plays that we haven't seen on a Page Pirate team. And the way these offenses have changed since back when I was a little boy back in school years ago, I keep thinking of every day I'll think, how do they get those four receivers and still have a back in the backfield? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking mm -hmm. you got six men like that. I'm thinking back in the day, you'd have the quarterback, maybe sometimes two and possibly three backs in the backfield, maybe one wide receiver, one tight end. So you're talking about there's your six men right there. We got we got two different groups out there. We got the the guys going to be getting the ball, and we got the five guys blocking. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So well, they use those you, four pretty well. Ooh. So that puts your defense in a bad position, Andy, because that's going to take if you can't play. And and, and and one of the things I like about that, that prevent a 4-3 defense from being dominant. So you're going to have to change your style of defense. You might have to go to a dime packet to stop Page because what they're doing, you got your two men in the gaps for the backs, and then you have the receivers covered because you can't get a safety to come over help side on DeAndre Overton. You and I saw it all night long. And they have probably 10 to 15 yards in between them and their defensive back. Too much space. And too much space. And, and because when you try to a 4-3 against a spread offense, it can't work. It's tough. It's a tough problem to have because you got to have those receivers covered. Absolutely. But you got to be able to have guys up front to put pressure to on the, the quarterback. Yeah. When you got right. the guys back covering, you got the guys pressuring the quarterback Jones, that's when you come up with that opening gap in the middle, and that's where Paige is going to pick you apart. And that's where they're going to pick you apart. Paige face that middle. Paige, uh, and, and as you said uh, the Friday night during the broadcast, whomever was upstairs calling the offense a game, Give that man another hat because he called, and I think it was Jesse Britt. He's the offense, and Weeks is the defense. Those are only two that are always up top. So Jesse Britt used to be a receiver in the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers and over at North Carolina A&T. So, and he used to coach over at, uh, Mendenhall. at Mendenhall. So all of those kids funneled through him. 
and he's been working well with the Page system. And I, I, I just don't see Grimsley scoring it's a touchdown too, tomorrow. because Grimsley, from what the coach told us yesterday, and Spencer was uh, kind of reiterating this uh, tonight too, reiterating this, the fact that Grimsley down like the third quarterback. You're down to your third quarterback going in. You know you Michael Williams, and I think it's Caleb Williams, the two Williams brothers who were at Page a couple years ago. They're now running back to Grimsley. Those two guys, Ken always tells you, Coach, I want to get that ball. Son, you're going to get that ball a lot tomorrow night. You're absolutely right. And, and, and Grimsley know coming in that Page is on a tear. When you look at Reagan, Oh, yeah. When you look at East Recite, Southeast, Page, I played the top teams versus the Grimsley schedule and been as tough. Grimsley have had a few tough games, but Page had played some games that they should have. Last couple of years, they didn't have a chance. Mm. But now, as you said, and it was Southeast to beat them two years back to back. Back to back. This year, Page made up for it. Page Pirates are a legit team. And yeah, they went through two years. There was six and six one year and three and nine the other. Boy, Page now this year is six and one and uh, not looking back. No, they're not looking back. They're, they're certainly looking to where they want to be now. Um, every coach talk about the three parts to a season. The first part, is non-conference. Second part, conference game. That's the most crucial part because you can't get to part two without going to part three. You got to complete part two. You got to have a good showing. Yeah. And part three is the playoffs. So if you do good in your conference, that's going to set your seed for your playoff. Page Pirates know to get that good seed in the Dodge Charlotte to be home, you're going to have to go through another panel. And the interesting thing is, after tomorrow night, the whole season is going down you're, you're right. Order. It's flying by. It's going down in a hurry. You're so you've right. been up to the top of the hill, and now you're going to turn around and you're going back down, but you're going slide now because the season's leaving here in a hurry. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's the season have come and gone. Andy, you and I was at Dudley, it seemed like almost yesterday. We were, Everybody was excited the start of the season over oh, at yeah. the uh, Jamboree, yeah, yeah. at the big scrimmage, mm -hmm. and I can see us like it was yesterday, standing there talking to Hooker and all the Dudley players, all the players yeah. just sitting there having a good conversation yeah. with all the kids. Kids and getting to know them, and they getting to know the media. Yep. And Sabine now, Gatlin, his dad, yeah, they were yeah there. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're coming off the field, and everybody talking to. Them. And now, guess what, Andy? Now you and I can't stand down there and talk to them on Friday night because it's down to business, like yeah. we did in the summertime. Interesting too. Now you're starting to separate in some ways the wheat from the chaff, and that kind of brings me to the next question: uh, Who do you see laying in the weeds right now, looking to kind of break loose here as the season goes on? Who's laying in the weeds? Landing the weeds to break loose, I would have to look at North. We, we got team. Yeah, you just picked. That's right off the sheet. Yeah. Because uh, we're saying we got teams like Dudley and Page kind of towards the Northwest in the weeds. Yeah, Northwest, and then uh, uh, you can't forget about the Nighthawks. I put North there right uh, there. The next team I got the sheet is right in the weeds. And, you know, when you look at the weed teams, Northwest, Northern. And either Southern Gifford, the storm, laying in the weeds, is laying laying in the weeds waiting for that opportunity yeah, to, yeah, yeah. for them to rise because right now everybody has their focus in Gifford County and Page and Dudley, but you have those other teams, as you said, lying in the weeds that can flourish and become a team loose. that we are following in the playoffs. Here's your question. I asked this to Spencer Turkin earlier, too. Your question tonight, being the broadcast man that you are, Dennis White, Shane's Red Chat, Thursday, Football and Focus for the big night tonight. Your question is this. Who is the second best team in Guilford County? Second best team in Guilford County, I would have to go to right now be Paige Pirates. Paige would be my second best team in Guilford County. My surprise team and my second best team in Guilford County has to be Paige Pirates. So your number one team again is? Dudley Panthers. Yes, sir. Drum roll. Drum roll. It'll have Dundee to be Panthers. Dudley Panthers. Okay. okay. And Andy, when you and I talked about Paige real quickly, I'm going to jump to this ring. I jumped back real quickly. Paige got the four best receivers. Dudley have the four best defensive backs. So when those four defensive backs hook up, and then Dudley have one man that nobody account for, Nigel Peel, in the middle, where Paige like to run in the middle. So it's going to be very interesting. You've got an interesting breakdown yeah. there. So your number one yeah. team is, without a doubt, Dudley Panthers. Yes. And the second team would be the Page, Pirates. Page Pirates. Teams in the weeds, there'll be three around the four Gonna range, Northern, Northern Gopher, and Northwest, 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 Northwest and Northern. Absolutely. Let me ask another question. C.J. Freeman, is he ready to go on a playoff run? Is this C.J. Freeman time? Is he ready to take over that team? I believe, yes, sir, because, Andy, you gave us a, a big synopsis about three years ago, the face of the franchise. Every face you put on a the franchise, they have – 
rose to the occasion. C.J. Freeman is legit. You, we, we talked about him the first game he had on 85 yards against Page Pirates. And you said, boy, he's going to really have to kick it in gear to get the South Carolina to show the next level. Mm -hmm. He heard you. C.J. Freeman had turned it up. And I'm not, I'm not sure Coach Steve Spurrier can handle the truth. Right. Especially the old ball coach can handle the truth because he's leaving out of South Carolina. And C.J. says he's still headed that way. Yeah. He, he's not going to change his mind and go somewhere else as of right now. And, and that's good. And I, and, I, and I think that so many times we see young guys sign because they meet that coach, very impressed, very impressed by the coach a pedigree, and they sign based on that coach. And a lot of kids, as you said, they withdraw. Uh, I can use my own personal family. Uh, Devin yeah. Downey, Andy yeah. Kenny jumped in, and uh, Bobby Huggins was leaving out. Yeah, He called me and said, I'm coming back to South Carolina, or I'm going to Virginia because Bobby Huggins is leaving. Yeah. So we said, just work this year out, play this year out, and then you don't make your decision. He came back to Oldham's in South Carolina before Andy Kenny came. Some interesting moves here. We'll think about those weeds and these players jumping out of the weeds, into the weeds, and all around. Big game tomorrow night over at Page, what's your attendance prediction? Oh, uh, we got. The, we, we're going to have to look at talking with uh, the halftime guests last week. Outstanding halftime show with um, with Rusty uh, Lee over at Page. I think it's. I think it's going to be seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yes, Coming sir. out tomorrow night. What did you have on your sheet? How close was I to Andy Dern? Magical sheet. I, think I put. Maybe 8,500 on that one sheet. Yeah, yeah. Other people guessing, like you said, between 7,000 to 7,500 possibly. How about the big game tonight? You got the Falcons and the Saints. This is a big game primarily because the Panthers are also watching this one closely. If uh, the Falcons fall, Panthers take over first place. Yeah, you're right. And, and we are all in the Carolinas room for the Saints. <laughs> you know, uh, big Drew Brees fans tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all about Drew Brees. Is he, is he back? Yeah, I think he's back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so I'm all about Drew Brees tonight because, as you said, we the home team need us to go for them to make it better for the Panthers, who's playing outstanding ball right now. Yeah, and they got uh, Luke Keekley back too, which is a good thing. That's a plus. And, and if, if I would have told you in August, West well, September, when we heard about Luke Keekley, Benjamin back in August, I say, Andy. Panthers going to be undefeated. When they lost Benjamin, to be honest with you, I thought well, it was we, over. Yeah, uh, when they you would have asked me, was I drinking the old cheer one? Right. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, and then Luke Kickley go down. And now Hardy is back yeah, as well. For Dallas. For uh, Greg Hardy back with Dallas and Kickley back, back with Panthers. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Hardy is back with the Cowboys. <laughs> it didn't help him one he's bit. Been, no, oh, wow. He's been uh, wow, reinstated with the Cowboys. Mm. I wish he'd stayed with the Panthers, but mm -hmm. one of those things that his reinstatement don't help us at all. What about uh, the heels in Wake Forest Saturday? How do you see that turning out? Think that'll be a 3, three, nine, three nothing game? Yeah, 27 14 <laughs> heels. 27 14 heels. 28 14 heels. Heels will, win. 14 heels heels will win well then, okay? Uh, among the best teams in North Carolina, Heels, Wolfpack, Blue Devils, Demon Deacons, East Carolina Pirates, who's your best these days? Carolina. Still the Heels. Yeah. That's a sentimental call, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. We got Bernie Sanders, we got Barry Sanders, we got Colonel Sanders. Among those three, who makes the uh, quickest impression upon you? The three Sanders, Bernie, Barry, and the Colonel. Oh, I would have to say Bird. I would have to say Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders, okay. Now, Bernie is the man running against yeah, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. I, I didn't, I didn't I know his first answer today. Yeah, 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 I, I haven't still gotten Still too soon. soon. Yeah, I haven't gotten into it. I'm, you know, I'm I'm with, I'm, I'm going to be with uh, Hillary. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've I'm already gotten home with the Clintons, so I'm going to stick with that. You you stick know? with Hillary? Yeah, I'm stick with Hillary. But uh, you're sticking with Barry among the three Sanders. Yeah, Barry Sanders. Yeah. Now, here's Barry something else to think about, a possibility. What if we had a presidential election campaign with Donald Trump versus Colonel Sanders? <laughs> Can you imagine what that would be like? I mean, the TV publicity, it would be, would be unreal. Those, it would be just unreal. Just the two facials of those two together. It would be unreal. Trump on the Republican one, side, Colonel Sanders on the Democratic, Democratic side. side. Yeah. You got one with a little funny beard and one with a little funny hair, so, you know, they'll be going at it. And both of them know how to say billions well. Mm -hmm. Both of them can speak numbers well. 
<laughs> but Colonel Sanders never really came up. I enjoyed his work and his uh, his what he turned out over the years. But he never came up with a secret sauce right. like uh, Shane came up with here at Shane's Rib Shack. His Absolutely. barbecue sauce whipped Colonel Sanders. That's why he was off TV That's for so he many years. Hey, that, he retreated. That. He he turned tail and ran for many years. Now he's back trying to catch up with Shane and the Shane's barbecue sauce. So the to the, the ultimate champ is Shane Rib Shack. You have the same sauce, yes, sir. Ronda Rousey. If Ronda Rousey was in town, <laughs> she would be here now. I'm sure. At, with her hand raised up, up, number one. Thank Absolutely. you, Andy Durham. That's Absolutely. right. Would you ride the ride at the state fair that uh, broke down last year and a lot of people fell off and got hurt? No, would you be, I would. Would you be uh, with twist. enough strength to go ahead and ride that this year? No, no, enough no. courage, no. courageous enough to ride it? I would. It? I'd be like. You'd stay away. Yeah, I'd stay away. I'd free like ticket. The, free, I'd stay away. I'd be like the, the, the line from the Wizard of Oz. I'd have courage. I, I can't do it. I wonder it. how many people would get back on that ride yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And, and that's a very good question, Andy. That's, probably would uh, uh, also cause us to take a look at the surroundings of the. Uh, Different concessionaires around that ride. Would there be a lot of cheer wine being sold around there? Those people might jump on that ride, possibly. <laughs> Here's your World Series question. Baseball uh -oh. going on. Saw Troy here earlier today. Troy came by. Troy's not happy. He's not happy. Cardinals got beat. Yeah. Cardinals out. Cubs yeah. in. Troy, he, did, he walked he's in pretty sad. quick on us all today. He didn't stay yeah, here long. He's, he's hurt. Asked if he's going to pull for the Cubs. Said so no Cubs. No Cubs at all. But from your standpoint, Dennis, are you going with the Cubs, the Dodgers? The Mets, the Blue Jays, or Royals. Blue Jays and Royals both got in the uh, ALCS yesterday. Texas Rangers got beat. The catcher for the uh, oh, Blue Jays wow. threw the threw ball the back, ball hit off his bat, bat, and the run came in to score, 50, and the fans went crazy. 53-minute debate on the officials. Andy, that's what I wanted. Let me ask you. You've been around baseball all your life. I'm, I was looking at it that the ball is still in play until it hit the pitcher hands. Is that correct? In baseball, if the ball passed through the catcher, right? Through the catcher. That runner still can run. Right. When he threw the ball, when he threw the and ball, he hit the bat. Came off the bat. And as long the, as the batter doesn't make any kind of move to move that ball, bat in front of that ball, everything's okay. Everything is okay. And, yeah. and, and, and you're that's right. That's the catcher's that's fault. The, that's the catcher's yeah. fault. That's just like if you throw it and it hit off a player. Because they went and got the rule book out and checked that rule. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's it because it's still a lot. And I give the Ranger manager, Mr. Banner, so I think his name, their manager of the Rangers, credit for he looked it up. He, he knew the rule, and yeah. that's why he argued the call. Yeah. And he got the lead 3-2, to two, but then the, the uh, Blue Jays come back win that game. If the, oh, the, if the Blue Jays don't run. win that game, yeah. You couldn't have got the Rangers out of that no. uh, out of Canada yesterday. They would no, not be no, again. No. You'd have to put them inside the clubhouse, right. lock them in there for two or three days. <laughs> the fans would have tried to kill them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And Andy, that that is a legal play. Because, um, I agree with you because as long as the ball is still in play, and as you said, the batter didn't make a he didn't bat make move. any kind of move to try to you, put his you, bat you, in front of the right. ball. You're right. That's the catcher's fault. And that's like if the catcher would have threw the ball and it would have hit up the hit the leg or any part of the player throwing it back, the, the free run. Absolutely. Runs you know? in the score. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if the batter kind of moves over that way, tries to get in front of that ball, that's a different right. story there. That's obstruction, as they mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to this page game again tomorrow night. What do you think, uh, as far as it goes down the stretch run, most exciting thing about I know because we lined this game up. We were talking about doing the Northern Guilford Eastern game. We did that last year. I thought we'd come back to Page and the Grimms again this year because of the big moment at Page about getting the game back at their place tomorrow night. What's the most exciting thing about you going in there tomorrow night is you anticipate being there tomorrow afternoon for that game and get ready for it? I think it's the uh, pageantry, the rivalry of Gifford County high school football. There's nothing like a good rivalry game. Uh, Paige and Grimsley, Dudley and Smith, you've now got Northern and Northwest, uh, High Point, Central Andrew. That's right. This is what bring alumni, this is what bring the community together on the, you got people that if they don't come to any other ball game, they're going to come to that ball game with their alma mater when they're playing the rivalry game. Absolutely. And this is what it's all about as media. You love to be in the mix it's about the event. Of, of the event. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, the, the lopsided score don't matter because you have little kids that's going to Kaiser. Say, so guess what? I'm going to yeah. be playing at Grimsley. You got little kids Mendenhall. going over to Mendenhall. I'm going to be playing with Pay. You and I saw the game the other night. The little boys yeah. was over on the sideline and, and, and dreaming to get on the Friday night. And guess what, Andy? One 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 year, they're going to move they're, from they're that just field. just one field away. One field away, yeah. absolutely. And one I'll, cannon shot I'll, away. I'll, absolutely. Better look out for that, especially if Kaiser <laughs> kicks that ball their way. Get out of the way. I was over at Mendenhall back on Tuesday, and they had the Mendenhall game going against Southern Guilford. Southern Guilford 
Milford Knights, of all things, in the middle school. That's their nickname, the Knights, there. But uh, Mendenhall Page's uh, feeder team looks pretty darn good. And they had a bunch of little kids. Up on, they had about 500 kids on the playing games during that game. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there. Those, those are little kids in there that I, I remember myself. Uh, I couldn't wait to get on the field on Friday when you go to the games. You throw old jeans because, oh, yeah. you know, you're going to play. And it used to be so – we didn't have a football. We used to get cups. Everybody get a drink. We used to big. put the cups yeah. together and make the football out of the cups and throw in. Good stuff. Come home with your pants all dirty and mm. tired. But you had a good time with your friends from school. You'll never forget those days. No, you won't forget never those. Never forget them. That, those, were the most, those were the most humbling moments of my life. Watching the kids. What I liked about those do. days, to be honest with you, I always loved going against those in those games, playing with the older kids. You had yeah. the kids in your grade, yeah. you knew pretty well. But meeting some of those guys from a couple oh, of grades ahead yeah. of you, yeah. man, you love to go against those guys. Maybe Absolutely. whip them a little bit too. Yeah, and all of a sudden, who's that kid? <laughs> <laughs> you're making a name for yourself. Yeah, you're, that's you're what you like to do. That's what the competition was with the big boys. Yeah, you're I mean, right. That's like being in the neighborhood games back when I was a kid, maybe about fifth or sixth grade. Uh -huh. In those games, uh -huh. we'd have like seniors in high school right, out there, right. thirty-year-old men. Uh -oh. Oh, man, Some guy pop you upside the face. <laughs> Kids, you're not coming to my yard yeah, doing that. See, my I've place. always been tall, so yeah. I've always been bigger than those kids my age, so yeah. I had to play with the next group up, you know. And uh, the other thing I like about that Page and Groups of Game, I think it's good to be back on the Page campus. On their own campus, yeah. Because that, that means a lot to the Page fans. Your home game, it's, it's, it's kind of hard on somebody at school, and um, you got to sit on this side away from now, you get to sit on your side. Mm -hmm. And uh, Page. Pirates is ready for this game. There's something about that rivalry game that you want to beat the opponent. You call it. You call it about five years ago, backyard brawl. Yeah, they the backyard, backyard brawl. brawl. You yeah. can bring the sink. You can bring bats. Mm -hmm. You can bring different That's things. That's why I asked the fight. guys earlier that the question, the hypothetical question on the kids tonight, on the young men, was the question: If you could play for Page or Grimsley tomorrow in that game, hypothetical, who, which team would you join? <laughs> Majority were going toward. Page. I said, I want to play for Grimsley to go against, be the underdog. Right, be the underdog. <laughs> yeah, good against Paige. Yeah, you're right. Been the underdog. If I got he, called in from another school to come play for the, that school, one of those schools that night, I would come in that game and I'd try to find somebody to make a statement. Right. I'm like, people, I want to remember that guy. <laughs> Even if you get kicked out or put locked up that night. Right. You know, you know, good things turn around later. You, you was there. Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. was there in it. Yeah. And uh, as I use the word, the pageantry, it's, it's oh, an yeah. awesome feeling. Uh, you and I had the opportunity to be in the boots over at Grimsley and the alumni from 50s. Oh, yeah. 80, 56 up to 2014 was there, and I was like, Andy, he was like, yeah, they celebrate their 50 years, 60 year anniversary yeah, reunion, yeah. yeah. So it's big. That's a big, and uh, well, talking to Rusty, there's a lot of Page family and Grimsley family married. So you know the split houses. We yeah. talked about the split houses and uh, a lot of friends. They're close knit group. They're what? I think you said six, seven minutes apart. Uh, yeah, six, somewhere in the neighborhood, about apart. seven, eight yeah. minutes. Yeah, not far at all. So that's the backyard battle. Rusty over Terrace up the street, right yeah. by us, and right. head on over there. You're and right there. You're right there. The that's right. Heartbeat. You don't have to go far. And the years, uh, the, the years I came aboard with you. That's that's when they was pulling shenanigans at school. Mm -hmm. They was doing trickery, go over there and take the pirate, yeah. wrap it up, and all of this stuff. And you came up with a unique thing you said to me and Big Jim Mullen. I never forget about it. What about if we go over and paint the ship blue and white and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> one page because the ship they used to have under the that scoreboard pirate, yeah. where we used to always put our banner. Right. And you said, well, we go paint that blue and white. And I said, Paige will beat you 100 to nothing then because you painted it. Then nobody could move it because it's there, you know? Right, exactly. So, yeah, we used to have all, used to have all those kind all of kinds things of crazy about ideas. It. Yeah. Yes. Good yeah. stuff, good stuff. Well, Dennis, what's uh, have you tried the uh, buff Q here at Shane Drip Shop? I have. I ate I that haven't. sandwich last week, and I tell you what, that was a challenge. That was a battle last week. I, I was a successful attempt. Took that sandwich on. It was a big bun and big chicken on that bun and sauce and then a side with it. Wow, that was big. Well, uh, yeah, I had asked Don what did he have last week. Uh, that that sounds good. I heard you and Paul talking about it. That mm -hmm. that, that is good. That, that is good. Good sandwich. And this week I think I'll go for the chicken salad, maybe a Brunswick stew to go with it. Oh, man. Hey, you know, that Brunswick stew, you turned me on to that a couple of years ago. It's good stuff. And, and it's some good stuff. And I come in, um, especially during the cold time, I always get the Brunswick stew, and I think about you. You turned me on to it. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's been a good run tonight, Shane's Rib Shack. Again, thanks to Coach Tommy Norwood with the Ragsdale guys that came in. Thanks to Coach Clay. Sent the Western Guilford young man tonight, Mr. Flippin', Mr. Sibley. Had Mr. Boykin and also uh, Mr. Drayton from Ragsdale. 